So this is what it looks like at my place right now. <laughs> These are the flat irons of Boulder. This is where uh, my husband and I live. And I just wanted to use a pretty image to give you a little overview of the Elements workspace that we're going to be working with. There's a few things that are important to note. First of all, uh, one of the most important things is we're going to talk about this bar right here that goes along the top. Now I'm in the edit workspace, okay, so you can see these three tabs over here. They used to be color coordinated or, or, or colored so you know where you are in the previous version of Elements, but now they're all just nice charcoal gray. So this is the edit workspace and you can see you've got three different modes to edit in, which we're going to look at in a moment. But here in full edit mode, I want to point out this guy up here at the top, it's called the options bar. Let me just zoom in a little bit. There we go. This is the options bar at the top of your screen. And you're going to see all kinds of different options up here. And what it does is it allows you to customize the currently active tool. And the currently active tool is the one that's currently selected or activated rather over here in your tools panel. And that's another thing that I love about Elements is the tools actually look like their real world counterparts. Okay, see this big old honking pink eraser? That's the big old honking pink eraser you had in elementary school. So you would use that to erase things if you wanted to do that. So Elements is very, very friendly. So for whatever tool you've got activated over here, we'll just click the eraser tool to change it and we'll go back and look at the options bar. See how they changed? Now I've got an option. Well, I've got a, a pesky tooltip coming up here in yellow is what I've got. <laughs> but I've got an option to change the size of my eraser. I've got a little pop-up menu that lets me uh, tell elements what kind of mode I want to put the eraser in, whether I want it to behave like a, a block or a pencil or a brush. Brush is a good one to, to leave it on. And you can control the opacity of the eraser. So, as we're changing tools, be cognizant of this options bar. And probably the biggest troubleshooting tip I can give you is if a tool ever seems to have lost its ever-loving mind or is misbehaving in some crazy way <laughs> or doing something unexpected, nine times out of ten, you've changed something in the options bar and not changed it back. Okay, that's the big deal about the options bar is these settings stay changed until you change them back. Okay, so just kind of be aware of that. Uh, here you'll see I've got two little tabs, I've got two images open, so you can open as many images and elements as you want and they will open as a series of tab documents. You can also see the images that you have opened in the project bin which is at the bottom of the interface. So I'll zoom in and cruise on down here so you can see that. So you can choose uh, from the file menu and choose open to open your images or you can double click your images or you can drag and drop your image icon onto the elements icon to open them. And however many images you open up will show down here in the project bin. This is going to be real handy when we start making collages and combining multiple images into a single elements document. That's where that's going to come in handy. But for right now, I'm going to collapse it. All these different little panels or panes or whatever the heck you want to call them. They used to be called palettes, now they're panes. They're all collapsible and expandable. So if I give a quick double click to this dark gray bar next to the project bin, not clicking on the project bin tab in the dark gray area next to it, see how the, the panel collapsed? Okay, it's not gone, it's just collapsed like window shade. So if I want to expand it, all I have to do is double click in that same area to pop it back open. So until we get into collages, I'm going to go ahead and keep mine collapsed so that I get more real estate for editing. Now these panels over here on the right hand side work exactly the same way. See here's our effects panel, we talked about that briefly in our intro. So if I want to collapse it, I would need to double click the dark gray area right in here, okay, not on the tab, just in that dark gray area to expand or collapse it. So if you, uh, for those of you at home, if you don't see exactly what I'm seeing up here on screen, don't panic, <laughs> which is just a good rule of thumb. Anyway, don't panic. <laughs> and see if your panel is perhaps collapsed, okay? And if you don't see the panel at all, you can open these panels up again by going up to the window menu 
and choosing them from this list right here. So those are all the different panels that you can have open in Elements at one time. So if one of them gets closed, don't worry about it. You can open it up in the window menu. Now, I spoke about closing one of the panels. Well, how the heck do you do that? Uh, you're not stuck with these panels being nested or docked, rather, on the right-hand side. You can put those suckers anywhere you want. So, for example, let's say I want to move my Layers panel, which we will be using a lot when we get into full edit mode. Let's say I want to move it somewhere else. Maybe you've got two screens hooked up. Well, you can move those panels over onto the other screen. All you do is click and drag their tab, and you can set them free and put them anywhere you want. And as soon as you let go, they are undocked now, and you can move it anywhere you would like. And if you wanted to close it, you could click this tiny little microscopic round circle at the top left. And if you want to redock it, back to the right hand side of your screen, you can click and drag this top area, this little area right here, slightly darker than the expand or collapse area. And you can drag that little guy back over into that side of the screen and see how that blue line appeared? As Soon as you see the blue line, you can release and the panel will dock again. And as you can see, you can dock them next to the original set, however you'd like to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get mine back over here. There we go. Lisa, I have a, a quick question from uh, the internet. Uh, Joe Robbins has asked, can you make the panel uh, menu narrower to expand the display? Let me see if I know what he's talking about. Are you talking about uh, making the layers panel wider? Uh, narrower? That was the question. Can, you, oh, make, can okay. you make the panel menu narrower to expand? I guess yeah, the, the image I actually display. don't think you can't. We're working in full screen mode, I think, right here. Normally, when you hover your cursor next to the, whoops, next to the, the edge of the panel, you'll get a double-headed arrow, and you can click and drag either way to make it larger or smaller. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. All right. Any questions on the general workspace overview? OK. One more thing I wanted to talk about before we get away from this image is I wanted to spend just a couple more minutes talking about resolution and how you change it. I want to show you all something that I hope is going to make the resolution you know, conundrum make a lot of sense for you. If you'll look down here at the bottom left with this image open, let me zoom in and show you. Elements has given me some information about the image here. So I can see here that I'm at a 33.33% zoom level. That's how far uh, in or out I'm zoomed in my image. I can also see the physical dimensions of my image should I choose to print it. Okay, that's what this is telling me. If I wanted to print this image right now, it would be uh, nearly 14 inches by nine and a half inches, okay? Uh, so let's take a look at that information in another way. I'm gonna open up what's called the image size dialog box. Now this dialog box will become important to you because um, it's gonna let you experiment with the resolution measurement to see how big of a print you can actually get. So let's say for example, I took this image, I didn't, but let's say I did, uh, and I wanted to print it really, really big. Well, I would need to know how many pixels I had in the image to know if I had enough of them to make small enough so that I'm not gonna see them individually in the print. A great way to experiment with that is to open the image size dialog box. And you can do that by choosing the image menu, going down to resize, and then choosing image size. Now, these little uh, cryptic looking icons to the right, those are your keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so if you are a fan of keyboard shortcuts, and I am, so I'm gonna load you up on a slew of those today, you can press Command Option I and open that dialog box as well. So let's just go ahead and pop that baby open, and let's talk about some of the things that we're seeing in here. First of all, this dialog box gives you a wealth of really important information. Uh, we'll start at the top here where it says pixel dimensions. Elements is telling us that the current file size of our document, so that's how much room it's taking up on your hard drive, is 21.3 megabytes. Okay, that's pretty honking big. That's a hefty image. <laughs> and I can see here that we've got a little over 3,200 pixels by 2,200 pixels. Okay, so it's probably captured at a you know, best quality setting on, on your digital camera. 
This second area right here, I really wish would be changed to say print size because that's all it's talking about. Should you choose to print this document at this current resolution measurement, you would need a piece of paper that's you know about nine and a half by 14, okay? And as you can see, these boxes are live, so I can change those measurements if I want to. Now there's another option down here that I want to talk about briefly. It's called resample image. Let me just zoom in so you can actually see it. I think by default, this uh, setting is actually turned on, which means that if you make any changes to this information right here, the pixel dimensions of your image will actually change. Okay, so watch what happens here. So I believe it's usually on by default. So when I turn that on, now I've got, I can edit the width, I can edit the height, and of course I can edit the print size and the resolution. However, when you are changing resolution to try to get a, 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 the print size that you want, you really don't want to throw away any pixels, okay? So you want to keep this resample image uh, checkbox turned off and that way you're going to lock the pixel dimensions up here at the top like they were a second ago. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and look how the width and height boxes are no longer editable. That gives you the ability to experiment with the resolution measurement all day long or till the cows come home as I like to say without ever altering your image quality because the pixel dimensions are locked. So let's take a look at what happens to our image if we were to change the resolution measurement to 72. And y'all know that the higher the number, the tinier the pixels. Okay, so we're going to change it to a low resolution of 72, or not to be confused with 27. <laughs> so at 72 pixels per inch, where they're fairly large, look how big the physical print size of that document would actually be. So that kind of helps illustrate that whole uh, brown sugar in the measuring cup, how low resolution images can take up larger surface space with the pixels are big. But when you start making those pixels small, you get much less physical surface space. So if we wanted to print this at 72 PPI, we'd need a piece of paper 45 inches by 31 inches. That is a really large piece of paper. <laughs> so now let's take a look at what happens when we go up to 600 pixels per inch. So now with a higher number, we're making the pixels super tiny and see how now we would only be able to get a print that's you know, about five and a half by four. So as the pixels get smaller, so do the print size that you can create, okay? So that's just a little bit about resolution. And this is a fabulous box, like I said, to go in and experiment and see how big you can print that image because you may not be able to get it a high enough resolution with the pixels that you have to print in the size that you want. And that's a great way to say, oh, well, maybe instead of an 8 by 10, I think I'll settle with a 5 by 7. Did you have a question? And what is the ideal print size or resolution for printing? That's a great question. What is the ideal print resolution? I would say anything over 240 pixels per inch. Actually, you can go lower than that. The best way to find out is to do some experimentations on your own inkjet printer. Um, but inkjets do a great job, really anything over 180 pixels per inch. But if you wanted to be on the safe side, anywhere around 240 pixels per inch is fine. Uh, for a long time, the gold standard for resolution for print has always been 300. It's a little bit of an overkill on inkjets, um, but it certainly doesn't hurt, you know, to try 300. So if you can remember 300, great. If not, 240 is pretty good. Lisa? Yes. Um, I have a question from Amy Dew in the chat room, and a couple people have, had asked, how do you get all the tools to show? People are saying they can't see all the tools that you have on their elements. Is there, some, is there something they're missing? Um, they may not be in full edit mode. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of this. Any questions on the resolution? Okay. So I mentioned earlier that Elements has three different editing modes. So in two of those modes, you're not going to see all the tools panels and the layers panels and all that kind of thing. So that's probably they're not in full edit mode. So let's just go ahead and take a peek at these other modes. So I'll go ahead and click Quick. And this one, like I said earlier, uh, with Quick Fix mode, Elements goes and grabs all the most frequently used adjustments for color and lighting. 
and it slaps them down on the right hand side of your screen as a series of sliders. Okay, and you can use this little scroll bar to uh, scroll up and down. But you'll notice over here on the left hand side that a whole lot of things disappeared on us. First of all, our options bar uh, kind of got a little bit smaller and our tools panel, like half of our tools got tossed away. So elements in its uh, own, you know, meaningful way is trying to keep you from being so overwhelmed by five million options, <laughs> which, you know, it definitely can be overwhelming. All of these programs can. So it's trying to hide options from you to keep you from being distracted. So that's quick fix mode, and we're going to spend a little bit more time in that later on.